Hey, what's up, my mortgage peeps? Today is Thursday Thunder, where we interview a top real estate agent and break down how you as a mortgage professional can get business from agents just like them. The idea is to find out what strategies work and what will give the real estate agent to look in your direction. Today, we got Danny Baker with uh, Coldwell Snydemiller Realty out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. What's up, Danny? How's it going, Caleb? It's going good. Going good. Good. Hey, uh, you know, these, these Thursday Thunders are kind of broken down to where we only have them for run for about 15, 20 minutes. We don't want to take too much of your time, so we'll kind of jump into it. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, what got you into real estate, what agency you're with. I did mention it, but kind of um, how long you've been in, in the game, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm in my fourth year right now. Uh, I'm with Coldwell Banker Snydemiller Realty here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, and the main reason I got into real estate is I'm just passionate about helping people um, and more importantly, helping people uh, reach their real estate goals and uh, have always been in the sales game um, since, you know, right out of high school and uh, ultimately found myself kind of running into situations where I couldn't control what I could do uh, in terms of, you know, you know my abilities and, and where I could grow. And so um, I just transitioned from a, you know, from a sales job in to real estate, like I said, about four years ago. So I'm in my fourth year. It's been awesome. Um, and every day's uh, more learning. Cool. Well, you sure live in a beautiful area. I, w I wish I lived there. Yes, I, I wish you did too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to jump right into the, nut the nuts and bolts of the conversation and really try to, to give some value to the, the mortgage professionals out there. Um, when you're looking for a lending partner, um, what are, what are some factors, some important factors that kind of come to mind right off the bat? Well, yeah. So, you know, in terms of lending partners, so I can honestly say I've actually never really looked for one just because you get licensed and they come after you pretty hot and heavy, uh, early on. Um, yeah. and so the, the lending or the partners that I've used, um, I can tell you the reason that I've stayed with them or, or send business their way. Um, really has to do on a number of things, but you know, ultimately that the biggest thing to me is going to be, um, availability, responsiveness on their end. Um, you know, as a real estate agent, um, I know that, you know, meeting me getting into this business, um, is by decision. So I say that, uh, in preface that I don't control my time thinking, you know, originally thinking getting into real estate that I did. Um, but ultimately I don't control my time and I have clients that are getting after, you know, getting, getting to me after hours when I have my kids, when it's really inconvenient, but I need mm -hmm. to get the answers. If I don't get the answers and they're just going to go to the next real estate agent. Um, so if I have a lending partner that's willing to take calls, um, respond to me when I need answers, that's ultimately, you know, one of the main reasons why I stay with the people that I stay with and who, you know, why I'd give someone else a shot is, um, is the main thing. Um, above and beyond that, there's not too many things that a lender can do, um, that would be a value add to an agent um, because, you know, it's a pretty level playing field, if you will. Number one, like I said, would be responsiveness. But above and beyond that for me, too, um, if let's say I had a, a lending, someone who just got into lending and they wanted to reach out to me to try to earn my business. Um, one thing that they could do uh, to do that would, would be, you know, help generate leads for me and help close those leads and, and nurture those leads. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say I started a Facebook campaign. And these leads are, you know, going directly from Facebook into my CRM. If I had a lending partner that was willing to jump in and actually make those calls, I'll tell you mm -hmm. what, that would be a home run in my book. Okay. Okay. So if there was a campaign that you could identify that would, you know, make you kind of turn in their direction, um, something that would fall on the lines of lead generation is kind of what, what you're saying. I think that would be, you know, definitely, uh, something that would set a lender apart from other lenders. It's easy to find a lender that's willing to, you know, contribute into spending yeah. money for leads. Um, but what I've found is, is, and I've asked lending, you know, lenders and loan officers in past to, to help me nurture leads and help generate leads and help convert leads. And, yeah. you know, I'd like, I'm in my fourth year right now to be four years in July. I've only found one loan officer that actually makes calls with me and it's pretty awesome. And he's the one that wow. gets on my business right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. No, that's, there's something to be said about picking up the phone and actually dialing. There's this, yep. this adage in sales that 
a lot of times a salesperson just doesn't ask for the business. They do all this marketing and they do all this, you know, uh, uh, you know, look at the shiny new object type mentality. And in the end, they're just not asking for the business or picking up the phone and making the call. So that's huge. Absolutely. Um, love it. So top of mind awareness, uh, every market's different. Obviously you're in North Idaho, there, Spokane, Eastern Washington, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, top of mind awareness name, top three lending, uh, organizations that come to mind right now. Boom. Organizations. I'd, I'd say, uh, Willamette Valley bank, mountain West bank, um, and platinum home mortgage. Okay. All right. Um, so you kind of already alluded to it, but I would say what piece of advice would you give a lender getting into the real estate game? It sounded yeah. like it's go. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, they're, they're all hungry. When everyone gets into the real estate world, everyone's hungry and it's, and it's nice to, to get that energy off of a, of a new loan officer or even a new agent that gets in. But um, one thing that they could do that would separate them. And, and I, and I'm sure it's a hard job as a new loan officer to work with, with agents that have been in for even, you know, four years like myself um, because I get hit up all the time. But if I had someone that, you know, was hungry and willing to make calls and convert leads, you know, into clients, I mean, that would, that would definitely, you know, get, get them, you know, going in the right direction. And, and above and beyond that, if, if you had a loan officer that learned how to generate leads by themselves or with the help of an agent, if they had to, um, and nurture those leads and then have leads to actually truly, you know, give to an agent, then, mm -hmm. you know, that would be a, a great thing for them as well. You say that you're, you're marketed to quite a bit. What, what are similar things that you're seeing? What's a common theme? Like what are these, uh, these loan officers marketing to you that isn't working? That that's just kind of, Oh, I see this all the time and it's not really adding any value. Well, you know, I mean, they, for the most part, it's all the same. You know, they start with a card or a call um, and that would transition organically into a lunch or, you know, a drink or whatever that may be. Um, I think that is great. And um, there's, there's always going to, that's always part of the sales cycle for the loan officer. What most loan officers do is they stop and there's, you know, yeah. Someone like a real estate agent, most real estate agents kind of have the same personality and we love people. So when you have a loan officer reach out to you, you know, you typically want to give them the time of day because you like people. And, you know, I've got guys that get into the business that I know really well and I want to give them business because I know them. Um, and ultimately, you know, I don't end up doing it. Number one is mainly because they stop following up. Um, yeah. They kind of yeah. get burned out and, and sure, you might bug a couple people, but I've used loan officers in past that just keep on following up. And the reason for it is, especially someone in sales, I admire persistence. And I would imagine that most agents admire persistence. So, um, yeah. you know, those things that they do, I wouldn't say they're failing at, um, in, in the process of it, but ultimately they're failing and, and not, you know, following up enough. Yeah. No, top of line awareness is huge. And there's different um, studies out there and different uh, things kind of floating around the internet, but, the most that I've seen and I actually printed out and I had, I had carried it around with me for a while, but it said it took 12 contacts to yeah. make a sale. 12. So some say five, you know, some say seven, but this one said 12 and it had it broken down in a way that I was like, wow. And I'll, bet you, that number is, I'll bet you that number has jumped up quite a bit, even, you know, since you had that, just yeah. seeing how connected we are today and with, mm. you know, all the auto responses and all the touches that you can essentially automate, yeah. um, I bet you that number is even higher than 20. I'm sure it has. Yeah. And if you look at the 80, 20 rule, like it was 80% of the, the, the salespeople out there quit after the, you know, the second or third call. It's kind of crazy. So. Yeah, I think we're all, all guilty of it. I know I'm guilty of it at, at times, but, um, yeah. you know, if you just persist, uh, sooner it will break through with some of these guys. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. I have two rapid fire questions for you. Um, you can elaborate on them. Okay. Um, what is the book that you have suggested the most to people and why? So, you know, I think, uh, one of those books would be, well, you said one book. 10X Rule by Grant Cardone is probably the number one. Um, number two close second would be How to Win Friends and Influence People. But um, 
both are fantastic, but the 10 X rule, um, it, I, I read the book right when I got into the real estate business and uh -huh. it set an amazing foundation, uh, for me. And ultimately the book just, you know, the whole, you know, background to the book is, is you have a goal and you break down the numbers to get to that goal. And then you multiply that by 10. So if I had to make four uh -huh. calls a day to set an appointment, yeah. you know, and then really I'm going to try to make 40 calls and uh, you'll be surprised how f much you can get done. Um, you know, when, when you multiply everything by 10, um, it wow. didn't, it didn't get me to my goal that year. Um, but at the same time, yeah. I used an extra one. It was a really big goal. So that, that's probably the, the number one book. Cool. That's awesome. No, I'll have to check that out. Um, best piece of tech that you've invested in the past year to optimize, improve or automate your business. Ooh, optimize. I, you know, I wouldn't say it's optimized, uh, or sorry, it's, it's, um, automated anything, but, um, for me, I have a handheld gimbal and for any video that I do, um, that thing's dynamite. Um, I don't understand why more agents don't use them. Every single agent should have a gimbal. Um, but <laughs> Hey, I guess it's my, yeah. my secret for now. Um, right. but yeah, it costs like 150 bucks and video smooth as butter. <laughs> sweet sweet all right man well thank you for your time i've probably taken up at least 15 minutes if not more so um best of luck to you and i'll see you next time i'm, I'm ro rolling up in the cda sounds good brother all right all right see you, yep. see you.